So, hello everyone. Uh, today I will be talking about product discovery, which is my favorite topic in the uh, last couple of months. Um, so yeah, let's jump right into it. So this slide, probably uh, many people already seen some variation of this, uh, but I think it's useful to just quickly uh, summarize or for some repeat kind of the overview about uh, the process for building digital products in general. So at least in my mind, uh, there are three phases. There is a discovery phase, design phase, and development phase. And <clears throat> today we will be focusing on the discovery phase, but obviously it has impact also to the design and development. Uh, so, you know, in discovery phase, the main question is why? Why we are doing this? What problem are we trying to solve for the user? What's our mission here? Um, what's the strategy? How we can I will achieve that mission? You know, uh, the user already has the problem in the real life and somehow uh, try to solve it. So what is the value that we are bringing on the table? And the outcome of the discovery should be <laughs> meaning for the team who is building the product like why we are doing things uh what what is the direction and so on so we should have clear uh understanding why we are building this product that's the ultimate goal of discovery phase in design phase <clears throat> the question is what what we are building what is the solution you know it has aspects like usability you know the visual attractiveness but also like the the tech architecture, tech design behind the solution. So the outcome of the design phase should be, yeah, in our heads as a team who are building the product, we clearly know what we gonna build. In the development phase, yeah, it's about, you know, actually building it and how to build it. And again, the ultimate goal of development is that we will run it in production, people will successfully use it, and because our solution has high quality, it's, it's per, it has high performance, it, it's secure, it's scalable, right? So this is kind of brief overview about the development process. I will maybe now browse it a bit to the history of Salsita because it will show kind of the, the struggles that we were having with this kind of process, at least in my head. So nine years ago, when I joined Salsita as a, as a UI developer, like life was pretty simple and easy because the clients came to us and they said, hey, here are the requirements, here's this design. And we go or we went straight to the coding and you know it was great. The trouble was that sometimes we felt, OK, we don't understand really the requirements or sometimes the solution that they proposed was like yeah that's weird what we are building doesn't make sense and more and more we are kind of thinking yeah it would be great if we are actually the one who are designing those applications that we are coding so cool like you know we did a great job on the development from so client trust us so they said yeah like okay if you guys want to uh, try to tackle the design, let's go for it. Okay, so we introduce a designer. Okay, there's a new project. Uh, the designer said, we, we, uh, we told the designer, hey, please design it. And basically, it's overwhelming task because where do I start? And it was kind of chaotic and, and messy, messy uh, process how we try to come up with some kind of design that was, uh, that serves as a requirement for the development. Okay, but like we enjoyed more and we felt, well, this is a good direction. We, we simply just need to improve kind of the design process. Cool. So there was the design sprint. Wow, it's great methodology because it's in just one week, we can, uh, in a very nice and structured way, we can come up with the, with the design. For the clients, it's also great because, you know, first two days we are brainstorming with them, we are getting to know each other and it's all awesome. But the trouble was that even though we have, I would say, success, many successful design sprints, we always felt on uh, on our end that you know it could be done better, 
And there were troubles like, I remember that, for example, that in those first two days, for example, there was a couple of people on the client side and they were kind of saying, or discussing between themselves kind of the whole strategy of the project. You were like, oh, hey guys, maybe you should have like figured it out before the design sprint. Or we felt that during the design sprint, we tried to tackle really huge uh, scope and we didn't have time kind of to go into the details, which is also not great if you want to start the development process. Or sometimes we felt that we didn't prioritize the important things enough and we, we are kind of focusing on brainstorming things like, I don't know, let's say onboarding a user, which is good feature, but not really core feature for that product. So those were kind of struggles. And every time we did a uh, retrospective, how to do it better, there was always one kind of takeaway. We need to do better preparation for the design sprint. But what means better preparation for design sprint? So that's the discovery part. That's basically the research. And say, like, okay, so we should start doing research. So what we did, we start uh, saying our clients, look, before we jump into the design sprint, we need at least a couple of days that we will do research on your problem. Awesome. But we had kind of similar issue as, uh, as before with the design because the researcher, in our case, uh, designer, as, it's the same person as, as designer. So designer start doing the research and it's like, where should I start? Like, you know, I will check somehow the competition. Okay, we somehow have the conversation with the client. Uh, ideally, we would talk to the customer. Sometimes it's not possible. And basically, we try to come up with some kind of report from that research, which, you know, it was very useful. Uh, we had many kind of materials for the design sprint, but also we felt, yeah, it's kind of a very chaotic process. We don't really know what's the specific goals and how to do it and what should be the particle plan. So we were kind of like, yeah, it, it's better, but definitely there should be a better way. And this, uh, this talk should be about kind of introducing what's the better way. One more kind of story uh, behind. I always, and probably not just me, were curious because I think it was like two or three years ago, uh, we did actually one very successful design sprint. And before we did actually some research phase. And actually we always, when we were discussing uh, some, follow, some different design sprint for different clients uh, that uh, came after this one, we said, well, why it didn't why it wasn't that great as this one and um i think it was for uh the first american and it was kind of interesting because basically the client told us in the very beginning what they want what are the components of the solution and usually like our kind of approach as a you know product people, you know, product manager or product designer, we are like, yeah, like we don't really care about our solution because we are all about the problem, right? Like we care about the problem. We are trying to research the problem and then we will figure out the solution. But in this case, they told us the solution kind of upfront, high level, but they told us. But the interesting part was that uh, because of that, we could, in the research, we could really focus on kind of researching the solutions and that time, actually, the, the, the research felt very organized and we had really good results. And uh, as a result of that, we had really good preparation for the design sprint and the design sprint uh, was a really good success. So why this one design sprint was so successful where the others were like good, but could, they could be better. So what was the problem? Yeah, to understand the problem, I will use analogy a story from my life i think it was like 80 years ago so 80 years ago <clears throat> i was single i had a couple of friends they were single as well it was before the summer and we were like okay so what are you planning to do over the summer oh not much and then somebody said hey we should do you know some holidays together somewhere 
I said, wow, that's interesting idea. And, you know, we are like four or five friends and, and people start saying like, for example, me, I said, yeah, I would like to visit, you know, Alps and have, you know, hike in the mountains. Then somebody said, yeah, I would like to visit some European cities, the historic centers. Somebody said, yeah, I want to visit, uh, you know, uh, or swim in the sea and li lying on the, on the beach. And there were all those different stories, very specific one. But what was interesting that from the discussion, we started to kind of outline the plan because suddenly one of my friends said, uh, yeah, I have sister in the Switzerland, a specific story, and we could visit her. Okay, so let's go to Switzerland. There is a mountain, so we will do the hiking there. And yeah, it's just a few kilometers to Italy and we can visit some city there and maybe uh, stop by the sea, right? And in the pub or in the restaurant where we was, we, we, was, we kind of figure out this kind of map, how the trip would go. And then uh, each of us start kind of researching what we could do on the specific location that uh, that particular person cared about. So, uh, you know, my friend who has sister in Switzerland, uh, she started to figure out, okay, maybe we can do this hike and do kind of specific uh, research on, on that thing. Why I'm saying this kind of weird story? Because I think that this is exactly what we were kind of missing in the, uh, in the, our kind of research approach. If I use this analogy and say that Salsita is a travel agency who is planning uh, trips for single people uh, to do, you know, uh, road trips uh, around Europe, and basically they would come to us and they say, "Hey, you know, I like this uh, nice uh, restaurant in München. I would definitely would like to visit it." And we say, "Okay, wait, wait, wait." This is very specific solution. <clears throat> we are really curious about what problems are you trying to solve? I say, I don't know, but I, I guess I like beer. I like food. Okay, cool. So we will do research on the best food and best beers. And from that, you come up with things like, yeah, there's a great pub in Amsterdam. And then somebody else would say, yeah, I like, you know, Alps Mountain. And I say, so what's your problem? You like hiking in the mountains? But there is mountains in Norway, right? And <clears throat> so we did kind of this very chaotic research that actually that doesn't, well, it kind of, it's good inspiration, but we all feel that it's kind of very chaotic. So what's the solution? Or before I jump to the solution, uh, this is a very weird drawing that I drew yesterday. I'm not sure I understand it right now. But <clears throat> what I'm trying to say here, that what we were missing all along was that we need to distinguish, okay, it's great that we are distinguishing the problem and the solution, but we also need to distinguish between kind of the details and the high level overview. So for example, I will give you an example on our application that we all know, uh, Performance Review App, and I will try to kind of describe you the process what we should be doing because i personally believe that in order to do good for example research or generate a discovery phase you need to both understand all those details but also what it means in, on high level and both for the problem and the solution so i will give you an example when i'm doing uh, reviews for example with pms uh, it's actually very complicated because they have lots of and lots of feedback and so what I need is, I need, I would like a feature that I could highlight, for example, the most important notes from that, from that, uh, from that review. Okay, so that's a very specific solution. So if you do the research properly, somebody should ask me. So why you need this, uh, you know, highlighting feature? And we can say, well, because uh, you know, I need. Uh, to when when I'm doing the review with a person, I need to quickly kind of tell him or tell her that you know uh, the, th those most important stuff. Okay, so that's the specific problem, right? Like I need to quickly during the uh, during the the meeting kind of figure out all the, uh, 
to kind of say the most important uh, things uh, to the to the reviewee. Okay, so what's the kind of high level problem there? Well, what we are doing on the reviews is that we want to give valuable feedback to uh, to our employees so they can you know keep improving and so on. Okay, and what's the high level uh, solution? The solution is that that we have summary page uh, with all the reviews uh, that or with all the reviews feedback that the person received. See, basically, we discuss the details about the problem, details about the solution, high level uh, problem, high level solution. And that's what uh, we are trying to do. And what I'm trying to kind of say in this real drawing that sometimes uh, we can start with specific problems. Sometimes we can uh, start with specific solution. Sometimes we start high level and then mean to split it and kind of understand what are the details. And it doesn't matter. But like the, the point is that we need to understand all the aspects, all the details, but also the high level and both the problems and both the solutions. And the weird exclamation mark is that and that's probably mainly, I think, on, on PMs. Because as you can see, it's a very chaotic process. Like the PMs should be the one kind of making sure that we are always focusing on the stuff that are the kind of top priority. But because otherwise, there are always zones of details, but most of them are not as, as important as, as just few of them. Anyway, um, let's move on. So how to do it, finally. There is this method called impact mapping. It's you can imagine as I would say mind mapping that uh, probably everyone knows. So lots of bubbles that you are connecting together. The only thing about this is I would say kind of structured and structured for product management purposes. So the goal would be here that every time we start, for example, a new project or some bigger feature on our current project we would kind of go first through this exercise, this impact mapping, and we would draw this high-level map so we can kind of understand what's going on in all the contexts, and then we can decide what to do next. So how in the reality the impact mapping works? Simply, like we start, for example, the discussion with, uh, with our client and start from the left. So, hey, there is this new project, what is the goal? What is the mission of this project? Why you want to build this? Again, let's use the example of performance review app. We can say, yeah, we want to help uh, the team to keep improving. Okay, awesome. So, who you know who is involved? What what actors are there? You know, what 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 roles are involved? Well, obviously the employees. Uh, then there are the team leads that uh, they are leading the the review sessions. Uh, Marketa as so HR, I guess, maybe Matt, maybe others. Cool, awesome. So now let's focus on you know how with this project we want to impact those people, or how we want to change their behavior, or how we want to improve their lives, or what we need from them in order to to work to to achieve this ultimate goal that we set. Okay, so again, starting from, uh, for example, from the employees, we need to get, uh, or they want to get valuable feedback. Cool. Sometimes they want to hear appreciation for doing great job. Yes, definitely. Uh, from the team leads and HR, maybe, so for the team leads, uh, the, the first two points that I just mentioned are definitely valid. But also, for example, uh, those people are interested to learn about problems because they are not on every project, right? So, okay, so that's another thing. And, uh, you know, once a year we have the anniversary review. So uh, it would be nice to have like kind of fair evaluation about the performance of the person so we can, you know, uh, handle the anniversary review in the best possible way. Cool. So we have kind of the map of what each person trying to achieve uh, in this project. Awesome. Uh, the last part, kind of the deliverables, or you can imagine as, as features, right? So in order to get valuable feedback uh, as, a, as an employee, we need to have, I guess, some questionnaire so we can you know, get the feedback. 
probably we need some kind of notification to let people know that they need to fill it, right? Okay. Uh, probably we need some kind of summary or result summary page or something that you can actually read it. Uh, for example, as a team lead uh, when you're doing the review. And maybe you should have some kind of review archive so you can go kind of to pass and kind of check it, the notes from last time. Awesome. So what you can see is that in just this very quick and short uh, map, we have basically the functionality for performance reviewer. The nice thing is that even though uh, I would say the left bar is kind of focusing on the problem, right? And the right side, especially the features, are actually the solution. But the nice thing is that it's very high level. Uh, we are not really saying what kind of questionnaire, what kind of notification, right? Uh, it could be application like we have now. It could be solution like that we simply use, uh, uh, you know, Google Sheets and the, the Google survey functionality. It's some integration to send either email or, um, I don't know, Slack notification. Or maybe we can uh, uh, do some research. Maybe there's already some application for sure. There are some application for those kind of reviews and maybe it fits our needs. Or maybe we can, I don't know, like somehow hack it together using some no code, low code platforms, whatever. Yeah. Uh, those are all possible solutions, but we are not saying here what's the best solution because we are keeping it on a high level. And that's the whole point. Like without basically saying how things should be, we have pretty good understanding of the whole thing, what we are doing. And that's the point. So that's how we start projects. And then there is a second part that we, we do uh, in the discovery phase, uh, do specific research. So after we have this map, what we can do is, you know, especially uh, this is probably mainly for, for PMs and designers, we can say, hey, maybe we should probably talk to employees, do a do bunch of customer, inter customer or user interview. So we kind of learn the details. We should definitely talk to the team leads, what they need. Uh, obviously, there are lots of employees and we can talk to everyone. So maybe we should use some more uh, quantitative methods like, I don't know, surveys. Uh, we already have some applications so we can use analytics and kind of validate our findings, right? And that way we will learn more and more. Obviously, if we can definitely do some kind of competitive uh, competition analysis, see, okay, are there tools already for that? And if yes, we can at least see if we can directly use them or maybe, you know, take some screenshots so we have inspiration when we are actually building the particular solution. So how we can imagine the, the whole discovery is that you have this map as a, as a, as a base and then kind of each bubble you can imagine as, let's say, an ocean page or Google uh, Docs document where we fill all the details based on that research. And from then, from there, what we can do is uh, we obviously will present it back to the client and say, okay, that's what we, what we are, what we found. Uh, and we can have discussion. Another thing we, what we should do is kind of identify what are the most important things, right? Like for example, especially uh, focusing on the features, right? Like should we start with notification? Probably not, probably we should start with a questionnaire. And another discussion that we can have is, so do we think the questionnaire is kind of tricky feature or is it simple feature? And then we can decide, will we do a full design sprint and we will spend you know, one week kind of figure out the questionnaire or maybe some shorter workshop, like two hours with designer, uh, PM and the client, we can figure out something because it's not that tricky. Or maybe just the designer can kind of play uh, by themselves and, and figure something out, right? That's what this map allows us to do. Be more kind of mindful about our, our plan because before we always said, oh, let's do research, then design sprint, always. No, now we can uh, be more, we can more adjust to, to the actual situation. Now I would like to talk about one thing and that's actually the third column. Uh, I call it like, for me, it's basically jobs to be done. Uh, not sure if I talked about jobs to be done on some browback. So I will try to a little bit explain it because for me, 
understanding jobs to be done is the key to actually build successful products. So yeah, now I'll be talking about what jobs to be done is. So I think the best way how to describe it is uh, based on story. So a few, few years back, I actually uh, received this present uh, with this kind of board game. I think in English it would be like Black uh, Chronicles, something like that. Basically, the rules are that there are cards that describe some kind of weird beginning of story. And usually there is, I think, like death involved that somebody died somehow. And basically, your and all the other people are kind of guessing you know how you know how it happened how how the how the that happened and it's kind of visually some kind of funny funny accident or something like that so i will tell you now the weird story and you can kind of do a guessing game with me so there is a guy who hears screaming again screaming and he says i can't stand it anymore so he gets dressed and goes to the bank. After some time, he kind of, again, even more angry said, I will never get a mortgage. And then he go to a mall, where first go somewhere to buy earplugs, and then to some electronic store to buy uh, those headphones with uh, noise cancellation. So that's it. By the way, the story is not funny at all. <clears throat> so, like, what the what the heck is happening there? So, okay, so what's behind the story? Basically, the guy has a family, few kids. They are screaming all the time. They are living in small apartment, and he's crazy because he wants to work, but he can because there's all the screaming. So his first thought will, uh, was go to the bank, take a mortgage, buy some bigger apartment where. You know the 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 living room or or his uh, room where he's working is far far away from uh, the kids room, and but like he couldn't uh, take the mortgage. I don't know it was more, uh, expensive or something. So at least he went to the mall, buy the earplugs, and the uh, headphones with the noise cancellation, right? And that's kind of representation of what are jobs to be done, basically. It's the, the struggle that real people are having in their real lives and the way how they are trying to overcome them. So the problem was there is lots of screaming. There is no peace for that person. And one idea was, OK, buy a new apartment. Another idea was at least have you know headphones with noise cancellation. And OK, you're kind of thinking, well, that's interesting. But actually, jobs to be done are widely used with, uh, with lots of companies. Uh, and they are spending lots of time to really understand basically the, the way how they define their strategy and kind of the roadmap and everything is around the jobs to be done. And by the way, jobs to be done, don't think about it as just like this one story, okay? It's about you know, buying the apartment because kids are screaming. But think about it as a as a tree of kind of issues that or struggles that the person is uh, facing. So, you know, for the for for this guy, okay, if he, uh, for example, do the mortgage, then he would need to uh, deal with lots of bureaucracy. Then he would need to you know find an apartment, that move to the apartment. So it's kind of lots of struggles that that are connected to the ultimate struggle that kids are screaming. To illustrate it uh, even more, how this is kind of used in practice. So imagine Netflix. Like we are all watching Netflix, especially during pandemic when we are at homes. But the funny thing is that, for example, I was talking about competition analysis, and you know, that's the funny thing. For Netflix, you, you would think that, for example, HBO or or Disney Plus or Hulu or Amazon Prime, those are the competitors. Yes, they are for sure. But in reality, when uh, if you kind of look at it from perspective of jobs to be done, why you are watching Netflix? 
uh, let's say that you are bored. You kind of have some free moment and you don't know what to do. Okay, you can watch Netflix. Or you can take your phone and start doom scrolling your Facebook timeline. Or you can visit friends and have a, you know, and play some board games. Or you could go hiking. Or you could go to the restaurant or to the pub and have some fun, right? So ultimately, actually, for Netflix, okay, yeah, HBO is definitely a competitor, but they are competing for your time during uh, during the the situation when you are bored. So the true kind of competition, competitive analysis is actually about that you understand the problem and you see how people are trying to overcome that struggle, right? And uh, not everyone has all the uh, all the uh, streaming services, usually they have one or two, but usually the kind of competition is between the streaming platform and some other activities that you can do. So, for example, how uh, this is in reality use. I took example of Twitter. So, they specify, based on lots of research, like the, the key jobs to be done that defines their product strategy. Uh, the three, four, main jobs to be done for Twitter are that they want people to be informed. Like people are coming to Twitter to be informed. People are coming to Twitter to have meaningful conversation. People are coming to Twitter because they want to inform others. And there's kind of one bonus one. It's especially the one to kind of do it professionally, for example, because they are content creators. Uh, they want like, they Twitter wants to support those people uh, so they can do even kind of better job. Everything, the, the jobs to be done is kind of it's uh, it's involved in every decision making uh, across the whole twi Twitter. We can kind of call it there is this uh, product management methodology called North Star, which is kind of simple idea that whenever somebody is doing some decision and not and he or she or the group is not sure about the decisions like they should always ask okay so you know our goal is to help people be informed to have meaningful conversation and so on and if we do the decision if we take the option a will it improve or not or will it actually make it worse and that's kind of the north star that you always have uh this kind of anchor that you can use for your decision so you know, designers, whenever they do some design decisions, they can think about, okay, do we think that it will help people to be informed? Developers, obviously, and QAs, for example, you know, they cannot test everything. So, so they focus on testing those things that are key for those key jobs to be done. If you, for example, fo uh, follow some, you know, tech magazines, and sometimes they are kind of informing about some new features on platform like Twitter. So for example, you know that, or you would know that Twitter is, for example, now a testing feature that you can download tweets inside the conversation. Why? Why they are testing this feature? Because they want to have, they want to support people in having meaningful conversations. Why, for example, I think it was a few years back, I'm not sure now, they introduced uh, the long threads. Why? Because it helps people to be better informed. Why, for example, when Clubhouse was so successful, probably nobody's using it today, but why actually Twitter re-implement the whole functionality? Why? Because they saw that it could help them and their users to have meaningful conversations. Now, there is actually bonus questions. Probably the most wanted feature ever across all the digital products, I think, is uh, the feature for editing tweets on Twitter. I'm not sure if you are a Twitter user, but the problem is that if you, you know, tweet something and you have a typo there or you know, misspelling or something, you cannot edit it. You need to delete the tweet. It's so annoying. And for, I don't know, 10 years, people are asking, please, Twitter, please add this edit button. It's so easy functionality. 
I'm a developer. Give me one week and I will kind of program it for you if you are not able to do it. And the question why the Twitter is so stubborn that they are not adding this edit fun, uh, feature. Take a look on this issue from lens of jobs to be done that Twitter established. So, okay, if we add edit feature, will it help to for people to be informed? Sure, like, you know, if you do misspelling, obviously it could a little bit help, but usually the misspelling is not like that it, they kind of completely screw uh, kind of the information flow, okay? There is, there is misspelling and maybe you laugh to that medium or person, but it's not like that it's harming the information. But imagine like a you know, person like, I don't know, Donald Trump who were really using Peter and his really powerful figure and basically you know his kind of attitude, right? Like he's changing his mind all the time. He's crazy, right? So uh, he posts some tweet, you know, zillions of people retweet that uh, or comment on that. And suddenly he decided to edit it and completely change the change the original tweet. So what would help? Uh, what would happen? Would it help with the uh, jobs to be done, be informed? Not really, right? So even though you you get you would get like some better results with you know those misspelling and so on but potentially it would really harm this jobs to be done the same thing is with meaningful conversation imagine that there are you know conversation on twitter that are followed by lots of people and if somebody uh, start actually <laughs> kind of using this to to uh, you know change the complete the content like it would not help the conversation so for sure, every year, there are a bunch of people in Twitter thinking how we can introduce this, the most wanted feature, but they simply didn't figure out the way to do it in some easy way that, did, that wouldn't, in many sort of edge cases, but kind of important edge cases, to kind of harm the, the, the key uh, jobs to be done that they, they have there, right? Also, uh, another kind of controversy around Twitter is, uh, you know, when, I don't know, People are tweeting about COVID-19. There are those explanations, basically, that if somebody's kind of not really uh, spreading fake news, but maybe some misinformation. So there are those informative banners. So why they introduce them? Why they are kind of playing with that idea? Again, because they want to be the primary source for people to be informed. They want to help meaningful conversation. And we can have a discussion if it's working or not, but the the, the reason why they are doing is exactly because they establish those jobs to be done. So why I'm kind of describing, because for me, understanding for each project, when we are building something, those jobs to be done is absolutely critical to make good decision. And not just about prioritizing the roadmap, but every time we do design decision, uh, some tech decision, because that's what gives us the, the true context and that's what kind of align us in you know building something something meaningful that that will have in uh, impact on on people's life. So, if I can uh, summarize, uh, let's say, not sure if new process but updated process, uh, how we think about it right now, how we should do it. So as I said, when we start new project or some bigger feature uh, on current project. We should start with this impact mapping exercise to get kind of high level view on what is the problem and what is the solution. Based on that, we should prepare a research plan what exactly we would we want to try to find out. Obviously, start with kind of qualitative research, then maybe quantitative, check alternative analysis, uh, kind of the way as I described in jobs to be done, that it's not like that if we are building something for Netflix, checking HBO, HBO as well but also kind of trying to understand what are the alternatives, completely different ways of people are kind of solving the problem, right? To truly understand the, the user. Then we should, uh, and the goal of the research plan is to have understanding what are the jobs to be done of this product. Then we should do a presentation to, to the client and together with them brainstorm what are the next steps. Then there's a design phase. As I said, 
in past, we always the kind of default way to do things was design sprint because it was kind of structured and so on. But right now, because we have the map, we have all the information now we and we kind of prioritize the map. Uh, we can now do way better decision uh, how the design phase should look like. So sometimes you can say, look, this is a really complicated feature. Let's do proper design sprint because it will really help us. Or maybe, you know, there's like a couple of smaller issues that we should figure out. So maybe let's plan two, three smaller UX workshop. We dedicate the people, let's figure that out. And the rest could be done by the designer. Or maybe simply, we have so much, so many information. We are clearly aligned. There's nothing super tricky, and we just let the designer do their work and, and let them do the designing. Obviously, then we should do uh, also kind of uh, think about the sort of the design, the, the tech design as well. Do maybe some research, uh, POC. I don't know. Uh, that's kind of out of my expertise, but definitely that's part of it. And yeah, then there is uh, the development part and doesn't matter if you use shape up scrum or kanban uh we know the context because we did the discovery we have a uh, good direction because we have the design both kind of the the visual or the ux and and the the uh, technological one and then we could do a good job on the development part so that's it and thank you do you have any questions Thanks, Sonza.